So this is called, I'm writing this in the middle of a heat wave in LA during the 2020 pandemic, lol sob. It's 95 degrees. I'm sweating off my Kiehl's tinted moisturizer. I don't think I deserve air conditioning generally, so all the fans are on full blast. It's week seven of quarantine. I've been calling it the core core for whimsy. It helps. I have a Zoom with the Scream Queen team, a podcast I co-host about scary movies. I wash my hands. I tell them it's really hard watching scary movies right now. I can't consume anything with tension. Roy is sending me a Marco Polo about where to store potatoes. I wash my hands. Mom texts me something that I'm ignoring because if I respond too soon, she'll send 15 more texts in a row. I'm doing a house party with Lauren. We like to play its version of Pictionary because neither one of us are particularly good at drawing. It launches us into giggle fits. It helps. It helps when my body knows she's not in front of me. I hate cooking. I suck at it. I wrote a whole book about it. I did a lot of research on it. I washed my hands. I have an interview on Instagram Live with a chef. He says, you know so much about cooking, but you can't cook? I say, yes. It's a Greek tragedy. I live. My director is about to send me her pass on my script. Without saying too much, the main character is named Tommy, and he's from a reservation in Southern California who lives in Brooklyn and is a poet. I have imagination. I read my mom's texts. She tells me how to scramble eggs. She tells me how to make tortillas. All I want is fuzzy comfort. I wash my hands. I ask her to look through old photos because the Scream Queen team wants a pic of me as a kid in a Halloween costume for Instagram promo. <gasps> the thin membrane over my wobbly panic thins. My furniture deals group chat is talking about our enemies. I wash my hands. We talk about ain't shit men. When lockdown started, I told them, I love y'all, but I'm not reading your quarantine essays. Writing this is hard. It's the first thing I've written in seven weeks. It's a quarantine essay. I convinced producer Alex to do an hour's worth of Tracy Anderson DVD workouts on YouTube with me every day. Tracy time, we text each other each afternoon. It helps. Mom texts me an old school picture day pic. I think it's second grade. I have silver teeth and a res mullet. My unsafe space group chat is talking about BMs. My hail paymon group chat is talking about midsummer. Again. Mom texts me a picture of Papa and his wild bunch jacket. My house party with Marcos and Tazba, which we call house party dolls, is tectonic in laughter. Then it ends. I'm in my living room again. I turn off my lights. I lay in bed. I wash my hands. I wash my hands. I wash my hands. Ryan sends me a Marco Polo reminiscing on the universal demon gay pish posh about being young and love and a straight guy. Ryan is six feet a hundred. We used to have a, a flirty thing, but now we have a friendly one. In my food for thought group chat, that's thought spelled T-H-O-T, -T, uh, the, the, <laughs> the group, the gaggle is all caps about the new Tracy Ellis Ross, about the middle-aged singer who wants to record some more bops. It helps. Oh, Lord in heaven does it help. Mom texts me a pic of preschool me on my old bed with all my stuffed animals at attention. I liked seeing their eyes at night. I felt less alone. I FaceTime with Nikki. She's my favorite photographer. I wash my hands. She said, it's hard making art. It's Monday. It's Saturday. It's the 5th. It's the 15th. We end our chat 
our chat tipsy drunk saying, let's have another one. I wipe down my groceries. I wash my masks in the tub. There's the one for when I get the mail or take out the trash. And there's the one for my run. I go to the bathroom. I shut the door. I turn off the lights. I sing. The pounding slows down and I smile like I full on grin. I'm sweating off my tinted moisturizer again. Joe is a virologist. He says that we've been isolating long enough that we can start to open our social circle by one as long as we trust they've done the same. It's more than one, but it was a nice rhyme, so I chose that word. I'm writing. It's my dominion. Morgan is my plus one. It takes me three Janet Jackson songs to walk to her. Her dog barks a lot, but it likes me now. I want to cry. I'm in the same room as someone else, with someone I love. Mom texts me a pic of her and grandma at the table playing guitar. These aren't what I asked for, but I couldn't ask for more. I think of little me after bedtime, sitting in my sleep shirt in the door frame, listening to mama and grandma making music in the other room. I'd fall asleep like this, comforted, and mama would lift me back to bed by herself. I wash my hands. I Zoom my therapist. I do cry. It helps. It helps. It helps. Thank you. Day 11, shelter in place. It's been 11 days since the decree, 11 days since they removed me from the cup of your embrace, stated we could only use sterile gloved lips. My desire is only that which was only quenched. And now I am asked to distance. Can I love you long distance? Can I love you long? What is the distance we have traveled? Are we at risk? Do I love you? We never say it in the unsheltered world. I did not exist. I was invisible. I was a secret. Here, I will not be a secret. I get it. Best not to tell your family until you know. Best not to tell your family until you know. I guess you know now and are grateful. Day 34, shelter in place. We are on the phone. I can imagine his frail body leaning stiffly against the hospital bed rail. Everything in the room is a dull blue and gray like his eyes. The hospital blanket, the half open tied robe, his house shoes. On the phone, I can hear him opening and closing his mouth, gasping silently like a fish, once hooked and on its way to be sliced. He says, I wish I could download my brain. My own brain spins to receive this, knowing he has not ever used a computer. Yes, I say. I keep imagining this phone line is a connection between us. Well, yes, it is, I say. When I close my eyes, he says, I can see it. I close my eyes. I was wondering, he resumes, do you know where we could get any LSD? LSD, I ponder. Why? Well, we could take it together. Oh, I say. I know what my father believes about LSD, him having spent most of my teenage years on the truth serum, as he used to call it. What made you think of that, I ask? Well, it's a way to connect, you know an opening of the minds. I think about how long he has had that thought stirring in his head, how many years it has been lingering there. My father, pioneer wasp, married a dark-skinned Alabama woman in 1964. How they, of his generation, believed that LSD was the portal to a new way of being, of blending races, 
of overcoming prejudice. Now, so many years later, he is asking me what he could have told me, his three-year-old daughter, about why his mommy and dad, her mommy and daddy were not together anymore. He says, I didn't know what to say. And then I felt so much shame. All we could say was we did not love each other anymore, but it was not true. I'm trying to process the feelings of longing from my dad, how much he still loves my mom. Not that I wanted him to let go, but all the anger and the wasted time. There is nothing really to regret. Everybody moved on, but my dad stayed stuck in time, despite the LSD and the truth serum. Thank you. Single with a side of quarantine. I love the quarantine for it shifts the communal access of the world closer to my kind of loneliness. The year I begged for a baby sister, my folks gifted me an electronic pet made in China. This morning, I cut ties mentally with another friend who memed a whole race as the real virus. Washed my comforter, panic bought eggs, read a book erstwhile titled The Hall of Human Origins. I had named my pet sister, a coral plastic fish with a scream for a belly, Infinity. Fed her when she squeaked, hid her from disciplining nuns in my school despite its mind-numbing traffic and potholes deep as grief. I miss driving my dingy car on the Bombay ceiling tonight. I am craving the salt-soaked wind to ravage my argan oil-pressed hair. I come from a blank page with just the word eroticism doodled in its center. These days, I wonder if I can sell the condoms I hoarded at the women's clinic over the quarantine black market. My room is lit by a vase of billy buttons, yellow undying bulbs that need no care. The week tastes like brown rice and broccoli. It is the 12-year anniversary of my mother's passing. It was hard for my father to resuscitate infinity. No shop, he said, had the batteries we needed. There must be a room in the other world's architecture where one can sit for tea with the dead toy, the unspeaking mother, and the sold-in-a-rush first car. I hope they remember to stock honey and sugar there. Here is a quarantine Uh, Poems for my family. This is quarantine poem number five. My brain is devouring itself. Savory, simmering, obsessive thoughts spiced with anxiety and salty resentments in a thick, frustrating stew. It is the perfect recipe for insanity. My most frequent conversations lately are with inanimate objects. The wall, my laptop, minor characters in the horror sci-fi books and movies I regularly ingest. I plead with them to run, fight, look behind them, stay out of shadows as I dwell in my very own Stephen King universe. My neighbors have become mass marauders. We cross the street from each other and avoid eye contact. A tickle in my throat in public is illegal. Physical affection is lethal. And I literally cannot show my face at my local grocery store. It is just as well. There is plenty of paranoia and ice cream at my house. A cabinet full of conspiracy theories, a stale package of hope in the back of my freezer, an endless feast of gray matter for me and the ravenous post-apocalypse zombies when they inevitably arrive. Living in New York in quarantine, uh, quarantine in Corona Central, I've noticed that there has been an influx of roaches everywhere. All right, so this is, this is for the roaches who are living their best lives right now. It's called When. Looking out the window, roaches are hungrier, sure, but are finally allowed out in the daytime. The role of irony now between brick casings and dull kitchen lights humming, we are humming, while washing dishes and hands, and hands don't touch the roaches, are growing in numbers in parks and concert halls and stadiums laughing and playing while we watch. 